Bonjour y'all. I'm excited today to finally get to try out these Olympic chocolate muffins. I saw the recipe um, several weeks ago when they came out and I really wanted to make them, but school started here. It's been crazy hot, triple digits. I just couldn't find the time to do it and I couldn't get the gumption to turn on the oven, but we're gonna do it today. So let's get to the kitchen and get started on these. On y va, c'est parti. So I keep in this pizza box that I got from an unnamed pizza place these squares of parchment in my kitchen all the time. Um, you can order these are five and a half inch uh, 14 centimeter parchment squares that are pre-cut or these are six inch just to give you an idea of the difference in size okay you can pre-order those pre-cut or you can cut your own squares and we're going to make um tulip shaped muffin we want to place this on the top center okay and we're going to make a fold around where the halfway mark is I'm just, this fits into my muffin tin. I forgot to say that. You want it to fit in your muffin tin. And then center it, hand on top. And you're going to fold, let me see if I can do this towards the camera. Fold the middle in like this. Make a pleat. Okay. You're gonna do that all the way around. Give it a pleat and a turn. You can see my pleat there. Here you go. I'm making a pleat and a turn. Same direction. Pleat like this. Turn it and you're going to do it all the way around. And then we should have a tulip shaped cup. If you want to make this easier, you can fold the middle like this. That way you can see the exact middle. And then you're going to grab that fold and give it a pleat. Fold it down like this. Okay. And just kind of rub it. Ta-da! You've got your little tulip cup. You can order these from King Arthur, you can order these from Amazon. You can get them at your local baking store if you have one. I'm not so lucky. Or you can just buy these pre made. But if you need them and you don't have them, this is where we're doing this. Right. Kind of fold it down. Ta da! Alright, so you can see. The difference in size here. There's one, yeah, and here's the other. Okay, I don't know. To me, that's not that big of a difference in size. I don't know that I'm going to go out of my way to have both at the same time. Let's make some muffins. Now in this bowl, we have 200 grams of all-purpose flour. Most of this recipe is in grams. I will put the conversion for you guys on screen. We have 200 grams of flour. I've added 70 grams of Dutch processed cocoa. And you know, I'm gonna sift it because it's lumpy and we don't want that. So let's sift this. We are doing all of our dry ingredients in this bowl, and then we'll do all of our wet ingredients in another one. To this, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, this guy. That's a whole gram. <laughs> we're going to add three quarters teaspoon of baking soda, or bicarbonate. That's this guy in the box. 
We're also going to add a teaspoon of instant espresso powder. Which I'm not going to sift because it is lumpy. And, uh, but I need that in there. A three quarters teaspoon of fine table salt. You can add two teaspoons of kosher salt if you like. This is one tablespoon plus one teaspoon milk powder. Um, it's <sighs> Ma'am, why would you give me a recipe with grams and you give me something like this? One tablespoon plus one teaspoon. <sighs> You're really stressing me out. another bowl we're adding 175 grams of light brown sugar it's at this point that I realize I'm missing an ingredient but because the wet and dry are separate I can pause here and come back with no ill effect on my final bake while I run to the store and preheat my oven that gives you time to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already share this with your friends Get those muffin cups ready. Okay, to our brown sugar, we are going to add 100 grams, half cup of whole milk. And then 150 grams of a neutral oil, like vegetable oil, I'm using canola. Oh, that's fun to look at. <laughs> we're going to add two eggs add a hefty dose of vanilla and 27 grams eight ounces of sour cream the forgotten ingredient I went back to the store for let's whisk that together It's all nice and smooth like this. We're going to put it into the dry. We're going to whisk this together until we don't see any dry. Don't over mix. We're going to fold in 230 grams of chocolate chunks. I'm using these baking wafers. You can use chocolate chips or you can chop up a bar. This is a mix of milk and dark chocolate. I'm just folding it in. Oh yeah, I threw some white chocolate into mine. So if you see a white chunk, I didn't have quite enough milk chocolate. So that's what I went with. When I get towards the end, I like to do a spatula, cut to the middle, turn just a couple of times to make sure we don't have any dry pockets. Okay, this only makes six muffins. They're gonna be huge. That's why you have these tulip cups because it can hold more batter. So I'm using a dish again. Yeah, no, this is gonna make more than six. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Good thing these freeze well. In fact, they say they're better after they're frozen. So we're, we're gonna find out, cause wow. These are huge. Yikes, I almost missed the cup there. This one can take a little bit more. That was my bigger paper.
that's too much muffin for me, so <laughs> we'll make some more. Gotta make the fudge filling. <laughs> I have 140 grams of 70% dark chocolate here. In this pan, I'm putting 130 grams of water. We're gonna add 95 grams of granulated sugar. About half a cup. 20 grams of corn syrup. Thirty-five grams of veg processed cocoa powder. We're going to add in a hefty pinch of salt. We're going to whisk this to dissolve the cocoa powder. And if I were you, I would start this process ahead of time. Don't be me. You'll see why in a moment. constantly at this point, but you do want to keep an eye on it. Once everything is whisked into my liking, I'm going to switch to the spatula. And just make sure this doesn't burn. We're going to bring this to a boil and then lower the heat and cook it down for about five to six minutes. Here they are, right out of the oven, and the internal temperature is 200 degrees. Or, you know, you can poke it and nothing comes out, it's clean, but yes, these look great already. So let's let these cool while we finish it. So you can see, see it's starting to thicken up a bit, it's been about five minutes. I think this is going to take a little bit longer, but this is a new stove. I'm not used to it, so I was scared to burn it, so my temperature is a little lower than it probably should be. Let's see that. Okay, now we're going to add the cream in. That's just less than half a cup. Then we're going to pour this over our chocolate. Now we're going to carefully pour this hot mixture over our chocolate. Now these could be chocolate chips or um, could be a chopped up bar, whichever you like. And we're gonna let this sit for a minute so that the chocolate melts. Once we let this sit for one to two minutes, you can stir it or whisk it and all your chocolate should be dissolved. Now here's where I went wrong. You wanna let this and your cakes cool completely before you proceed with the next step. Trust me, you're about to see a disaster. Once your cakes have cooled, we're going to want to make a cut in the top. I'm using a paring knife to just cut out a little part of the top 
and the inside so that I can pipe in our delicious fudge filling that we have prepared. This is future me telling past me, you know that's too liquid of a filling. Why are you proceeding? Why? What are you doing? It's really too bad y'all can't see my face right now. I think I've never wielded a pastry bag before. This is just too messy and it is stressing me out. Like a lot. This recipe has given me nothing but stress so far. First we had the one tablespoon plus the one teaspoon and now this. No, oh, stop, 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 stop! Oh my gosh, stop! There's a whole lot of this fudge filling left. So I'm making new holes because, like, why is there so much lead? What, what's going on here? Well, no one can say I'm not persistent. Hi, it's Future Me again. This whole mess could have been avoided if I'd waited for the filling to cool completely. You'll see in just a moment. Chocolate one, K zero. If you're gonna make these, you need to make the frosting first because I let it set and look, it's not running everywhere. So let's go back and refill. Let's turn on the light. Let's go back and refill our muffins. Um, even the stuff I put on there before last night has set. So I'm just going back in and adding some of this beautiful fudge frosting. And I have more control right now. And I'm happier. So what we learned is. Make this fudge filling first. Give it time to set before you put it in your muffin or you have that. And that is not what we really wanted. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, these look pretty good without the frosting, but I kind of need it. They're kind of dry. I went ahead and tasted one. Or a piece that I cut off the top of one either, just to see what it tasted like. And it definitely needs something. I just have a cup to hold my bag here. So, when you get something going on like this and you want to push your frosting to the end or I guess this isn't frosting this is going flatten your bag out you get a bowl scraper and gently push it up you push so hard you shoot it at the end that helps you get almost everything there you go almost all of it in the end and then twist. Yeah, I made a mess on the camera. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Muffin mayhem. 
And they say these are better if you freeze them and then eat them. Mm, I'm starting to see why. <laughs> These are huge, and I made these half the size they said, so if you want a really giant muffin, then you do you and make those jumbo muffins. Let's see what's on the inside. Let's see how this tastes. Wait, I can get some on my fork. So look at that crumb. Mm, mm hmm Yeah, I would definitely make this again. But again, I would add in that cooling time that I forgot about. And most of these are going to go into the freezer. This is super rich. So, yeah, give these a try. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see me make next. Oh, look, I found a chocolate chunk. Yes! I love chocolate chunks. Girl, I, I gotta go. Uh huh. Bon appetit! Oh, good, you're still here. It's been a few days, and I did put these in the freezer, but I thought perhaps you'd like to see what it looked like taken out of the freezer. I've cut this muffin in half. It cut pretty cleanly. You can see the middle there, the lighter part, is still a little bit frozen because I am impatient. I this with a cup of coffee. But look how cleanly that slices. That top part is already thawed out, so it does make a difference on the texture. So, just FYI. And if you like chocolate, you want these. This has been messy, but fun. And why don't you check out one of my other cooking adventures in this video that YouTube has picked out for you next. Maybe it'll be less messy. See you next time. Au revoir. Thanks for watching.